So we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you will, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 is where we kind of stopped last week. And I've got a couple of things I want to go back. I want to rehearse with you because I want to make sure. Tommy, you have a question? Well, you sure can. Thank you. I, I, sh- I should have done it. That's fine. Tommy said put me on the prayer list. They, they'd done a, they did an endoscope yesterday, and they ballooned my esophagus a little bit. Uh, it's one of two things. He said it's either uh, a spasm in the esophagus or it's uh, acid reflux. And uh, so all these tests are supposed to show him what it is, and then we can make plans on how to fix it. And I go in in the morning for barium swallow. <sighs> Y'all don't do that. Go, oh man, I love that stuff. You know, that's a, say that, you know. But I go in for barium swallow tomorrow, and then I've got to get set up for one more test that they've got to do. Uh, it's called a esophageal uh, manometry. Manometry. Manometer. Manometry. Yes. Thank you. I never can get that right. Esophageal manometry. Esophageal. Say that ten times real fast. I don't need to. <laughs> So anyway, so I get set up to get that done. So and then from there, that we should know what's the problem. Uh, I, the, everybody's asked, did you have? Does your does your throat hurt? No, it didn't. I, I went to sleep, woke up. I didn't even know anything had happened. I can hear my voice a little raspy this evening, uh, and I can tell that that's probably from that. But other than that, I'm fine. Appreciate your prayers, though. I really do. All right, let's. Uh, I want to share with you. I I want to go back just a little bit. I, I, I'm afraid I may have. I may have jumped the gun or just didn't get everything I wanted to. Uh, when we talk, we're talking about the gift of tongues. And uh, there's so much confusion about it in churches because there's, there's some good people that believe that tongues are for today and there's some good people that believe it's not for today. I'm one of those that believes that it's not for today and I'm going to show you why I believe what I believe. So uh, let me just share with you. First of all, you go to the book of Acts. That's where we started this whole thing. And we establish, first of all, before we even start anything, we have to establish that we will accept what the Word of God says over experience. You've got to do that, because if you don't do that, I, we can't talk. I mean, you've got to say the Word of God is, is what is truth, and my experience is just an experience. That's all it can be, because that's where people want to argue with me. Well, I had this experience. I said, well, what are you going to do? They'll say, what are you going to do with it? I said, I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says, and you're going to have to figure out what to do with it. So uh, I, I just want to share with you that. Then I want you to understand something. The book of Acts is a historical book. It's transitional. Uh, and I want, you to, I want you to understand that. That's so important in understanding the New Testament. From the start of Acts, Acts chapter 1, you have people waiting on the indwelling Holy Spirit. They've never been indwelt before. They've been anointed with the Holy Spirit all through the Old Testament. They know who the Holy Spirit is. Jesus says, you've known him, but he shall be in you. And so uh, this is what they're waiting on. Well, from the beginning of Acts to the end of Acts, is literally, it's the formation of the church, but it's also the coming of the Holy Spirit to indwell believers. It begins in Acts chapter 2. Four, four chapters you need to remember. Acts chapter 2. The Jews at Pentecost, they received the Holy Spirit. It's evidenced by the gift of tongues. And they look, they look themselves. They're God's chosen people. They're special. I mean, that's who they are. And so if, if something special like that's going to happen, something miraculous is going to happen, well, surely it would be them because they're God's chosen people. So they're first. And it's evidenced by the tongues. Then we go to Acts chapter 8. 2, 8. Chapter 8, we find Samaritans. They are half Jew, half Gentile. Samaritans. They receive the Holy Spirit, and it's evidenced by the gift of tongues. There's Jews that are present, always Jews present, whenever the Holy Spirit shows up. The Jews are present. They go back to Jerusalem and say, (laughs) you thought we were the only ones. Guess what? The Samaritans got it too. How do you know? They spoke in tongues. That was the evidence. They spoke in tongues, so they had received the Holy Spirit. So then we have Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 8 is who? Okay, Acts chapter 2 is who? The Jews. Jews, Samaritans, half Jew, half Gentile. Half Jew, half Gentile. Then we come to Acts chapter 10, Cornelius. Cornelius is a Gentile. You see what's happening? Jews get it. Hey, we got it. Y'all don't have it. Oops, 
Samaritans got it. Well, they're half Jew. They got it. Now Cornelius, a Gentile, is going to receive the Holy Spirit. And when he does, there's Jewish brothers who are there with Peter. And they run back to Jerusalem and say, guess what? The Gentiles have received the Holy Spirit just like we did. Really? Yes. So guess what? Just those three. I mean, we can stop right there. Those three have included everybody. And that's what God was trying to show. Is that I'm including everybody in the church. You don't have to be a Jew. You don't have to be partial Jew. You can be a Gentile and be a church. Aren't you glad because you are all Gentiles? So aren't you glad he included us? Amen. And that was evidenced by the gift of tongues in Acts chapter 10. We have one more chapter, Acts chapter 19. I throw it out here because it shows it. Paul meets up with uh, John's disciples. John, the Baptist, had preached about Jesus coming, but John didn't know anything about the coming of the Holy Spirit. John was before that and had been killed before the Holy Spirit comes. So John's disciples didn't know anything about the coming of the Holy Spirit. They knew about John's baptism. Oh, okay, John's baptism is not Christian baptism. John's baptism is the baptism of repentance. It was for the Jews. He preached to the Jews and said the, the Messiah is coming. And they would give their heart to God. As a, and as a testimony to that, they would be baptized to, to show that they were washing away their sin, that they were, they were preparing themselves for the coming Messiah. That's not Christian baptism. Christian baptism is a picture of salvation. It's the coming of the Holy Spirit. You're baptized. It's a picture of what happened. You're baptized by the Holy Spirit into Christ and raised to be covered in Him. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It takes place in salvation. So, uh, so anyway, so these are John's uh, disciples. They never heard of Christian baptism. They never heard about the Holy Spirit. And so Paul tells them about the Holy Spirit and they receive Christ. The, the, I need to get saved, and they get saved, and they receive the Holy Spirit, and it's evidenced by them speaking in tongues. Last time it's mentioned in the book of Acts. Last time. The only time we find tongues again is in the book of Corinthians. And the Corinthians are a messed up church. They are totally messed up. It takes Paul sending them two letters to try to get them straightened out. I mean, literally, they are a messed up church. They, uh, they understood about spiritual gifts, but what they understood about it was, if you have one, you're special. And if you have some special gift like tongues, you're really special. You ought to want that one over all the other ones, because then you've got this special gift, and you can show it out to people that you've got it. It's kind of a show-off thing. Well, so we find that Paul is giving them uh, kind of a tutorial on this particular gift, along with the other gifts, we've been through all the other gifts, Romans 11, 12, I mean 1 Corinthians 11, 12, 13, and now we come to chapter 14, and Paul is going into a series of just explaining about tongues. Now, I believe along with many others that there were some special gifts given to the apostles. We call them sign gifts, but the only sign gift that's called a sign gift in the Bible is the tongues. That's the only one. Well, I know, but it's never called a sign gift. So, tongues is the only one that scripturally is called a sign gift. But we believe there's four sign gifts or apostolic gifts. Let's just call them apostolic gifts. There's gift of tongues. We already mentioned it. It's a sign gift. Then there's miracles. The gift of miracles, the gift of healing. And the interpretation of tongues, of course, would have to be a part of that because of the other. And, of course, people then want to argue, well, wait a minute, you mean God doesn't do miracles? Yes, He does miracles. You mean God doesn't heal? Yes, He heals. But not as He did here. This was an apostle. It was given to the apostles to give them credibility so people would listen to them. They didn't have a King James 1611 Bible. They didn't have a completed text yet. So these apostles were preaching the Word of God. They were, as they spoke, they were giving out the Word of God. Well, listen, if I were to stand up here and say, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the Word of God. I received it from the Lord last night, and uh, here's what he said. Y'all need to raise my salary up to about four times what it is. <laughs> well, immediately you would go, I think he's lost his marbles. I have no authority. None. I can say, well, I'm a preacher. I have no authority. 
they could say anything they wanted to, but where was their authority? Well, God proved that they were the authority for, him to, for them to speak by these gifts. And they would perform miracles and healings, and they spoke in tongues, and this was part of them being recognized as God's spokesman. When the Word of God is complete, the apostles pass off the scene, 90 AD, about 90 AD, they pass off the scene, and those particular gifts kind of vanish away. They're gone. And uh, tongues doesn't appear again until like the 18th, 19th century. And even then, it's through cultic uh, churches or cultic uh, cults and so on until we finally get into the 20th century and it gets, gains credibility. But we won't talk about that. I want you to see what the Bible says, okay? Let's look at chapter 14. And I gave all that, now I've got 15 minutes to teach this. So we probably won't get through again tonight, but that's okay. I want us to understand this. Go down to, we were down to chapter 14, and uh, we started out, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him. Howbeit in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. That's a great question. Paul is saying, you know, with this, if this is of God, why is it mystery? Why, why is it nobody understands? Why is it some kind of, you know, language that nobody understands? And the truth is, these languages were understandable languages. People will come along and say, well, there's a heavenly language. Where in Bible do you find heavenly languages? Every time angels speak, somebody understands them. Every time God speaks, somebody understands them. There's no, there's no such thing as a language that, doesn't, that people don't understand. It wouldn't be a language if they don't understand it. So here he says they, they did. And then we talked about this. He says, uh, For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be done away. And we talked about how that uh, one will cease and one will uh, continue until it's... One will cease all by itself. I believe that's what uh, it is with tongues. It stops. It just stops all by itself. Uh, it says in um, uh, verse 8, Tongues, they shall cease where knowledge will vanish away and um, prophecy will vanish away, will be done away. So uh, there's two, and we dealt with that last week, and I hope you got it. Uh, I, I feel like that's a clear understanding. So tongues was to stop. Then he went into verse 11. We just quickly went into this. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, and stood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. The Corinthian church were like little kids. Nanny, nanny, boo, boo, I got a gift you don't have, you know, that kind of... Honestly, that's the way they were. It was a pride thing. I've got the gift of tongues and you don't have it. Nanny, nanny, boo, boo. And I'm going to tell you, that's a, that's a lot of that stuff goes on even today. Uh, you know, you Baptists, y'all don't, don't talk about the Spirit, you know. There's something wrong with y'all because y'all are afraid of the Spirit. And, well, they don't come here because I talk about the Holy Spirit all the time. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit works like crazy around here. But it's not in giving us some kind of supernatural spiritual gift so we can brag about the fact that we've got the gift that others don't have. God doesn't do that. God gives us spiritual gifts to use for the edification of the church. Now watch. Verse 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. There is a growth process taking place in our lives. It's called sanctification. And we're growing from that which is non-spiritual, that which is prideful, that which is of the flesh, and we're moving to a more spiritual person as we move towards heaven. Yes. I'm in chapter 14. Oh, I'm 13. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I, I went to the top of the page. I'm sorry, I'm 13 and I'm down to verse 12. For we know and see through a glass darkly. Verse 13. And now by the faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity, which is love. If you don't have love, the, your gift is it's, 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 it's not usable. It's got to be wrapped in God's love. All right, now verse 14, chapter 14. Follow after charity. And I know we, we dealt with all this. And desire spiritual gifts. But rather that you may prophesy. Prophesize preaching, speaking the word, prophesying. It's not about telling the future. It's about the Old Testament prophecy is, future, is foretelling. Uh, but the New Testament is 
preaching, giving out the word. Where are you been? Okay, giving out the word. Verse 2, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. And by the way, you have a, you have a King James Bible? Huh? The unknown is italicized. It was added for clarity. The unknown tongue. If it says unknown tongue. These are known tongues. They're not unknown. They're known tongues. Somebody knows these languages. So they're known tongues. So every time you see that italicized, it's letting you know that that was added for so-called clarity, but really doesn't clarify anything. Verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. A tongue? Good. Well, that's what it should say. Another tongue. Okay, that's good. That's good. Not unknown. He speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Now people say, oh, well, there it is. See, it's a, it's a prayer language. We'll continue reading. For no man understands him. Howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. I'm praying to God, and I'm praying in a tongue I don't even understand, and I'm... I, I'm praying. I, I don't understand. How do I benefit from that? How, do, how does that benefit anybody? It doesn't. And then he says, But he that prophesieth, he that speaks the word unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. Well, there's three qualifications for a use of the spiritual gifts. They should edify, they should encourage, and they should comfort. If they don't meet those qualifications, those if they don't meet those qualifications, they're, they're gifts that were given for something other than the church. God doesn't do anything in a null and void way. No. It always has purpose. Yes, sir. Yeah. Does the use of the gift of tongues do any of these? No. No edification, no encouragement, no comfort. Why? Not, they're not teaching the men the truths of God's Word. They're only, it's only done through prophecy. They're foretelling, telling the truth, telling the Word of God, speaking the Word of God. Verse 4, He that speaketh in an unknown or another tongue edifieth himself. That's wrong. Nowhere are we called upon to edify ourselves. But he that prophesieth edify the church. So verse 4, just real quick, between the two, which do you feel like would be better? Edifying self or edifying the church? Church, of course. And that was the purpose of the gifts. So we want to edify the church. Verse 5. I would that you all spoke with tongues. Oh, people go, oh, there it is. Paul said we ought to speak in tongues. Well, stop. Think about this. He's an apostle. He's living in the apostolic age. They were available at that time. Tongues were available during that time. And they could speak in tongues. But finish the statement. I would that you all speak with tongues, but rather that you prophesied. I'd rather you prophesy. It's so much more important. Why? Because the gift is understandable then. Uh, where am I at? Five. He that speaketh with a tongue, except he, okay. Uh, greater, for greater is he that prophesied. Then he that speaks with the tongue, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Again, we go right back. It's got to be edification. It's got to be edification. It, I don't know how many have ever been to a tongue-speaking church, but it's, it's an unusual thing. Usually you're sitting there and all of a sudden somebody pops up and starts speaking in tongues and somebody else, and then there's five or six of them speaking in tongues all at the same time. And, um, and um, nobody knows what they're saying. Uh, nobody ever gets up and says, all right, uh, let, me, uh, let me give the interpretation of what they just said. I've never heard that. I've never seen anybody do that. They don't do that. You have? And, uh, and so now they're going to give a, a clarification of what they said. Now, I'm going to tell you this. If the clarification is anything other than what the Word of God has already said... It's, it's a no-no. It's a, it's a false teaching. It's a false doctrine. It's a false cult because you can't do it. You can't change this book because you received a message in tongues and somebody interprets and said, well, I know the Bible says this, but what he just said from the Holy Spirit is this. The Holy Spirit will not go against the Word of God. And that brings me back to this. If I have the Word of God say it, why do I need you to tell me it in another tongue? I don't. I've got all I need right here, right? Makes sense, doesn't it? Now, when Paul's writing this, this book is not complete yet. 
So it's still viable. Okay? So you're not going to hear me say that it wasn't. It is. But Paul is clear about the fact of its importance compared to prophesying or preaching. Verse 6. Now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by revelation... And the apostles brought revelation. Nobody else did. The revelation came through the apostles. They're the ones that received the revealed word of God. They're the, they're the, the conduit for God. Or by knowledge, that's advancing the truth. Or by prophesying, which is preaching God's word. Or by doctrine, which is biblical truth. So basically said, it's better if, if I'm going to preach in tongues, if I'm going to speak to you in tongues then this is the only way you can profit from it is if through that I give you revelation. I can't do that. Revelation stopped with the end of this book. I can't add to this book or take anything away. If I do, anathema. So that can't happen. Uh, or by knowledge, the advancement of truth, and that's what God uses preaching for, the advancement of truth, prophesying, preaching God's word, that's what God uses preaching for, or biblical truth. It's taking what's already written for us and giving it, but for then it was a matter of Paul giving something that they didn't have yet. They didn't have this yet. So he said, "If I give you that, then that's that's what it should be for." Verse seven. I wrote this out. In other words, just to babble some un, unintelligible gibberish benefits no one. The true gift of tongues was meant to edify the hearer with revelation, knowledge, prophecy, or doctrine. Anything less is a waste of time. Verse 7. And even things without life. Now he uses an illustration. Even things without life giving sound. Whether a pipe or a heart. Except they give a distinction in the sounds. How shall it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound. Who shall prepare himself for battle? So this is a great illustration. I can go over here and, uh, and I can play some notes on the piano. <laughs> and I can play some notes on the piano. And I've seen Veronica play. So I'll play like she does. <laughs> Does anybody have a clue what I'm playing? Beautiful. Thank you, thank you. No, not a thing. But now if I do something like this. So, you know what I'm playing. It makes sense. Not that particular. I can't even play chopsticks anymore. But you know what I'm playing. That's what he's saying. That's what Paul's saying here. What good is speaking in some gibberish or something you don't even understand if, 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 there, if it doesn't give any warning, if it doesn't give it, I mean, what good is it? It's better that we hear. Then he uses the, the sound of a trumpet. And those back in the day, the trumpet sound established what they were doing. I just read in Numbers where they had to have two trumpets. They made two trumpets. And if they heard one trumpet, one side of the tribe got ready to move. If they blew the other trumpet, the other side got ready. If they blew both trumpets, they were ready for battle. But if they didn't understand the trumpet, if, it, if somebody decided, I don't want to use that trumpet, I'm going to use something else, they wouldn't know what to do. It would be chaos, exactly. And that's what happens many times in these churches because it becomes chaotic. People don't know what happened. Who said what? Why'd they say that? Well, who said they said that? Well, I don't know, you know. Verse 9, so likewise ye. So like the, the trumpet, like a bugle without... A, without a certain sound, except you utter by the tongue words easy to be understood. How much clearer could Paul make this? I don't know how he could make it any clearer. If seeking after a gift that makes you speak in a language, number one, you don't understand, and number two, nobody else understands, what, what is that? who does that profit? It doesn't. And we ought to want to speak words that are easily understood. Why not pray for that? God, help me to speak so people can clearly understand your gospel message. I don't need to speak some other language to bring somebody to salvation. I need to speak very plain and simple and put it out there where people can understand it. 
How shall it be known what is spoken if we don't speak that way? For you shall speak into the air. Therefore, are, there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, so many kinds of languages, and none of them is without signification. Every language has an understanding. Every language. There's no language out there that nobody understands. Every language has an understanding. If you're, you're Spanish, you understand Spanish. If you're uh, Chinese, you understand Chinese. If you're... Uh, if you're Egyptian, you understand, or if you're Russian, yes, sir. You, you know, there's a language for you to understand. If you're American, you're English, you speak English, and you understand English. S some of you speak English. <laughs> Sometimes I speak English. The Corinthian church was so self-centered and could care less about communication, they were only interested in impressing others, not communication with others much less edifying others. Their pride and their lovelessness drove them to promote self and could not have produced anything but confusion, disorder, and a lack of production. Because it just created confusion. And chapter 14 is going to go on into that. Uh, oh... Real quick, verse 11. Therefore I know not the meaning of, a, of the voice or the language. I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian. And he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. I, 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 I've been to Mexico. <laughs> and I swear, I won't go unless I've got somebody who can speak Spanish. Amen. I just, it's a waste of time. You know, I go down there and I, I try to talk to them about something. And you can tell they don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Ruby and I were there, and we were trying to get back to the resort we were at. And all I had was a cap that had a picture of the resort on it. The first thing I did, I got in the cap. I said, yo hablo uh, inglés? No, señor. No, no inglés. I said, oh. Well, uh, no hablo español, other than what I'm telling you. No hablo español. <laughs> I don't know enough to say that. And uh, I pulled my cap off. I said, uh, what was it? Royal something. Uh, this is where we want to go. Now you say it like this. This is where we want to go. Oh. <laughs> well, but they understand that. See, so you go. Oh, I know. It's, it, they look at me like I'm crazy, and they're talking to me, and they're doing just what I'm doing. They get louder just like I do. They think if I talk louder, they'll understand. No, we need to go here. Oh, like I understood you the first time. I, you can scream at me. I'm not going to understand you. you know? But it's barbarian. It's, and that's what Paul says. And, and he's referring to the gift of tongues. He's saying that this is the way it is with tongues. If, if you come and you speak another language to a church full of people who don't understand it, what good does it do? Nothing. It's so much better if you speak English. Verse 12, even so ye, for as much as you are zealous for spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. Paul is so clear about that. Seek those gifts that, that will bring edification to the church, growth to the church, will encourage people to grow, will help people to grow. Use gifts that do that. That's what we need to do. Oh. All right, I'm going to stop there. Didn't even get as far as I wanted to get. Sorry. But we'll stop there. I'm out of time. Any question, comment, or thought? I know there's probably questions. I'll try to answer one or two. Anybody? Where does it make it a foreign language? Because you look at Acts 2, when uh, after the Holy Spirit came and dwelt them, and they were walking around, how could these men, these Galileans, know my language and all that? So it, it seemed obvious to me that you were saved, you could understand it. They, uh, what happened was, is people were there for Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And so they were from many different countries. Right. They may all spoke Hebrew, but there were other languages there. And when the, the apostles stood up and started preaching, they heard them in their own language. Now, whether or not they were preaching it in their language or they were hearing it in their language, that's for you to decide. But they, they, it was the gift of tongues. We know it was the gift of tongues.
Uh -huh. and what God is. Right, oh, yeah. So it, to me, it seems like if you were saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, you could understand what that person was saying. Yeah. Where a man took it and said, I'm going to turn it into yeah. something else. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, yeah. Okay. It was different languages. The people have always said, well, did they hear it in that language or did they speak in that language? Either way, it, got, it, was, it was the gift of tongues. And tongues was a spoken gift, so I'm pretty sure they spoke that, that language, you know. Uh, well, at the United Nations, they have, you're speaking, they've got somebody feed them, tell them, interpret it in the ear, yeah. Okay. So we'll stop there. We'll pick up there. Not next week. Next week we'll be in the middle of revival. We'll pick up there in two weeks. Hopefully you can wait that long to, to hear what I have to say about this. So. I meant to be further. I, there's, chapter 14 just is... Honestly, if you'll take chapter 14 and read it for what it says, that's all you have to do. It literally clears it up. The problem you're going to have is places where it talks about belief and unbelief. And you have to know that their concern was the belief of the Jews. Uh, did the Jews believe? Did they believe that this was a gift from the Spirit? Did they believe the Gentiles received the same gift? Did they believe that? And so tongues was questionable as those who believe. And many times people say, well, it was evangelism. But it wasn't evangelism. It was an acknowledgement of the fact of, a, of, of the, uh, the coming of the Holy Spirit. And so um, it wasn't. Tongues wasn't used necessarily for evangelism. Uh, read uh, Acts chapter 2. Read what it says they preach. Uh, they preach the glory of God. Now, 3,000 people got saved. Praise God. That's a pretty amazing thing. But uh, its primary gift wasn't for evangelism. Its primary, the gift was given to give authority to the preachers so people would hear the message that they preached. And the message is what brought them to salvation. Okay? All right, let's stand and be dismissed to word of prayer. Are you thoroughly confused? I hope not. Acts 2, who is it? Jews. Acts 8. Acts 10. Acts 19. John's disciples. John's disciples. All right, let's pray. Father, Lord, I thank you for our group. I pray, Father, as we look into the word that we are committed to the word committed to the things of your word, Father, that it is the truth and that we want only that which is truth. And so bless, Father, as we teach, as we instruct, that we rightly divide the word of truth so that it's clear, it's plain, and understandable. And might we grow as your children in the word. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. No choir tonight.